What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here with Mr. Jared Abergina. What's up, dude? What's up, man? What's up? What's up? All right. Uh, it's a Saturday. Uh, we're here in the studio today. We're we're bringing you guys a, a new series, um, something that's been requested uh, for a while here, um, and it's 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 going to be a really cool series. Our plan is to have at least one of these episodes coming out every single week for you guys. And, uh, you know, I'll let Jared kind of talk a little bit about this uh, here in a second, but it's going to be pretty awesome. But before we get started here, um, for everybody that's listening, if this is your first time ever listening, uh, man, we, we've got a lot of different episodes. We got our What's Your Story. We have our um, full episodes that we have. We have our new series we're bringing. Uh, and then we're also going to have our safety talks that are going to be happening uh, on a weekly basis. So you guys are going to get a lot of different types of content, not just hearing people's story, not just us bullshitting and drinking beers, but some real meat um, uh, of some focused on some specific subjects that we want to talk about here. And some of these are going to be a lot shorter podcasts, so you can get them on your car ride to work or wherever you may be or up in the tree or something like that, which is going to be cool. So uh, until then, I'll, I'll let uh, Jared introduce our, our first series, and, and we'll we'll start kicking it off. All right, all right. Yeah, so to kind of piggyback on what you were talking about, Phil, you know, a lot of people have a lot of questions, you know, and as, as we, you know, are training or, you know, on the podcast, we got requests about different types of gear. So we just kind of wanted to focus down and kind of deliver – um, I don't want to say vague, but I just want to kind of go over, you know, a specific topic and, you know, for us, we're pro industry, right? So I just want to be straight right out the gate. You know, we want to, we, we work with all the companies, all the products, uh, we support them all. So when you see us or hear us talking about a certain carabiner or a certain type of product or a certain rope or a certain chainsaw, uh, we're not focusing down and saying, we think that's the best or uh, we're trying to promote that product because that's definitely not the case. Um, these are just some things that we have, and this mm-hmm. is a good place to start. And these are both companies that I've worked with in the past many, many, many years ago, and um, I feel pretty comfortable talking about them. So we'll just start start with uh, we'll start with that. Yeah, and and just piggyback on what you said, it's uh, man, we're going to be bringing all sorts of different products. This is this this series that we're bringing you on a weekly basis is our gear talk. Uh, we're going to be talking from clothing to uh, helmets to carabiners to ropes to boots to any different products that are being used out there in the field all the way to your chippers from cinnaboggins to you know your mechanical all that we're going to be bringing to you guys and uh short little episodes you know we're not going to get probably so in depth that it's a one two hour because there's so much that uh, to discuss on there but really try to give you just enough that you can remember to use or a couple things to think about throughout your day and then uh we'll be talking about those throughout the year uh and kind of bringing them back i mean I, we won't just have one episode on talking about husqvarna or talking about steel uh we'll have multiple episodes on yeah. that for you guys on yeah. there you know this too is is to get you guys to rise the question you know, go over and, and hit some some main points to where you start thinking a little bit more and have questions. Maybe bring that up within amongst your peers, your team, your group, and start to dial in. Um, you know, some more knowledge about the gear you're using every day. Because I think a lot of people don't. I think it's easy to get caught up on what's out there. There's so much out there. You get caught. Where do you go? What yeah. What do I buy? What's the difference between the carabiners? What's the difference between the chainsaws? All these things. So. We're going to nick away at it slowly, and um, I, I'd love to see where this goes. Let's uh, talk about it, man. What, okay. what, what do we got in our first our first gear talk? So first gear talk, um, you know, I reached in the bag, and I grabbed the first three carabiners that came out, and um, we're going to deal with Petzl product. So I have uh, this time around anyway, and I have three carabiners. Now, uh, what I have here is an AM, Petzl AMD, a Petzl OK, and I have a, a, a Petzl Williams. So... Um, every, every, every single manufacturer is going to have obviously their own terminology of how they're going to identify the shape of that carabiner. Here we go. I'll go ahead and give them, pass them over. 
Um, you know, to t- to start off, first thing is each shape of this carabiner, of these carabiners, are designed to be used in different ways. So there's no really one carabiner fits all. All right, depends on what you're going to put inside of that carabiner. So that's your first thing to look at when you're thinking to purchase a carabiner. Mm-hmm. What is it for? Is it for your lanyard? Is it for your bridge? Is it for your climbing system? Um, how, how how many items are you going to put in that, that that carabiner, and how much of the um, how much of that carabiner are you going to fill? Right. So as a as an example, um, between the OK and the AMD, one's round, and then one is shaped like a D. Right, so on the round carabiner, all these carabiners, they're they're designed and built to be pulled on their axis. So if you look at it here, they're designed to be pulled on their main axis point. All right, mm-hmm. as soon as you start to change that, and you start to change the load, and you, as you can see here, I'm pulling on the nose, and then the axis point on the lower side. I'm going to decrease the strength of that carabiner. All right, so they want to be pulled on the main axis. Now, each manufacturer is going to be different depending on their their load, right? So their KN for something like this on the OK and the AMD are going to be the same. You have 25 kilonewtons on the major axis, 8 kilonewtons against the gate. All right, what's a kilonewton for, for everybody listening? So a kilonewton is 220, roughly 220 20, 20 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you're looking at, that's that, that's 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 a lot of load getting put on these carabiners that mm-hmm. th- that they could they could withstand. The problem with that is when these gates become either sticky or they don't work properly and they don't function and close all the way. Now this carabiner becomes majorly weak. So you're looking at a difference from ki- 25 kilonewton all the way down to seven kilonewtons. So that's a huge difference. So we have to make sure one that. The, the function of the carabiner is working properly, which goes back into our, our gear inspection process with these carabiners. And it doesn't matter what carabiner, carabiner you're using, make sure you follow the manufacturer specs on that. Um, I think by now all the companies have a great, um, you know, the website, it's easy to find. Some of them have the RFID or the QR code you can scan and kind of research that product a little bit. How, more how many indeed. people out there, when they buy a carabiner, do you feel that actually does the research and, and reads that? I don't think many do, I, to be honest with you. I think this is kind of just, um, you know, tribal knowledge. It just gets passed down. And, you know, and every it might car- be every the wrong knowledge. Yeah, it could be. You know, I hear all the time, you know, people cleaning carabiners and like, oh, yeah, put some WD-40 in there. It'll be fine, you know. So that still happens today, and I ask that question every time we we hold the course: is you know how do you properly you know maintenance and clean your carabiners? And how many people say WD forty? Um, it's less and less. Less and it's less. Less well, and good. less. You know, good. We're, we're 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 getting there, but you know, warm soap, soap and water. You know that 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 typically does the trick. So it do, doesn't take much. Um, one thing about these carabiners I really wanted to hit on is you know their their shapes obviously determine what you're going to use them for, right? So making sure we're not stuffing a bunch of devices or tools into one carabiner. Now when this is loaded, it's too much for that carabiner, all right? So when you do that, you want to bump it up. You want to move into something like an AMD, or if you're using some as an example, and this is just this is just, gotcha. just an example, if I had a, a Petzl fixie pulley with a, with a wide fixed plate pulley that takes up the major portion of this carabiner, and then you have a press it cord on the other side. Doesn't matter if you're running MRS or SRS. That's a lot of material to fit in a carabiner. You can fit it in, a, in an AMD. You, you can, but it's going to be all the way from the nose to the back side of this that we're going to be loading. Then it's difficult to actually open that carabiner and get it on whatever your harness or a swivel or a ring. So this would probably wouldn't be the best carabiner for that. I would move into something into a Williams which is a lot larger. I can fit a Petzl, or I'm sorry, I could fit a, a, a pulley and I can fit a prussic cord, I and I, uh, whether they're splice, stitch, or I got to tie a knot, this holds. Because you don't want the better. loads to happen on the sides. Yes, we want, it, we want to disperse that load evenly. And to go into it, you know, this Williams is rated more. 
All right, for that reason, because we have more surface here. So now something like this, you're, you're talking 27 kilonewtons, so which is two kilonewtons more than these other carabiners. Yeah, another 500 pounds. Yeah, which is a lot. Yeah, which is a lot. So um, when I kind of recommend certain shapes and, and certain carabiners for certain things, you know, I take this into consideration. So uh, another example, we're talking about a rope wrench. A lot of people are into, you know, People love the rope wrench, no matter if it's the the newer, you know, fusion or if it's the the older style, uh, the older style rope wrench. You know, you still have to fit a rope wrench, a pulley, and press it cord. So this would be some place that I would I would go to to have that extra space. Now, some would say, well, why wouldn't I just use this for everything, right? Because it can fit everything. I don't need to fill it up. Well, now if you don't do that, you have a device on a use on this wide open space that can float around in all different uh, all different directions, and then create leverage in areas on this carabiner that you don't you don't want. So, um, and that's with every carabiner; they're all shapes, different shapes and sizes. I mean, you got carabiners and based are, on the manufacturers. Yep, based on the manufacturers. You know, some. I mean, is everybody trying to come up with their patent? You know, carabiner to set themselves apart. I mean. Why so many different shapes and, and sizes? I think the different shapes and sizes just come down to the different, well, different one, hand, hands. You know, I, I hear a lot. Some of these smaller carabiners that are coming out today, um, one, they're lighter, right? Two, people with smaller smaller hands, they they uh, just better use for them. Um, and I think it's just certain applications. It's nice to have a little tiny carabiner in certain places. You know, they you say about small big. hands. Yeah. Small, Small gloves. gloves. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a real thing. It's, it's a, a real, real thing. thing. But, um, yeah, for the most part, compatibility is another one. So when you're looking at some of the new products that are coming out, and I'm going to use Petzl as an example, um, you start to look at, you know, their shapes of that carabiner. Are they stamped? Do they have this ridge on it here that you're looking? Now okay. you'll see, you know, DMM, uh, Primarily had that that stamp look there for for many many years, and Petzl ended up changing their carabiners from a full round carabiner into that same style carabiner. Why is that? At DMM did well. One one reason, one thing they did is they designed their products, and I'm going to use the chicane as an example. And um, is now the chicane is designed to fit specifically for that carabiner. So if you try to use any other carabiner, it's not going to fit. So this is a perfect tight fit specifically for that carabiner. And they do that on purpose for safety reasons. For safety reasons. So now this thing, this carabiner cannot move in there. It's nice and stu- snug, so now it cannot be side-loaded. It can't get to a point where you can cantilever. Um, but, you know, it kind of brought it to the point that you can only use that Petzl carabiner in a Petzl product. So that could be a pro, it could be a con, however you look at it, that's just what it is. Um, yeah, I think that compared to, you know, you compare them to all the carabiners there's across the board, uh, you know, I think it's personal preference. Mm-hmm. You know, people kind of get stuck on a brand that they really like and they run with it. It's like Nike Reebok or Nike Adidas, right? You get stuck on, uh, you know, you and your Hoku's. My what? <laughs> no, just my Hoku's. Hoku, isn't that a shoe? A running shoe, or I don't Hoku's? know. Man. Oh, Hoku's. Yeah, Hoku's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know the name. Yeah. <laughs> Hoku's. Hoku's. Now let's talk about uh, on there when doing your gear inspection on your carabiners. What are some things you want to look at on inspecting, and then what are some um, practices, great practices you can do to make sure you aren't damaging your carabiners. Yeah, so damage your carabiner. These guys are so sensitive. You know, these guys, they take a beating. They're on your harness. They're up against a tree. They're in the elements. You know, they're getting banged around with your chainsaw, other gear in your bag. So, it, you know, doing a doing a full inspection of, of your carabiners, um, it's it's worth everything. So it does, doesn't take long, a few minutes. One is a visual inspection. Obviously, taking a carabiner, looking around, looking for any major damages, cracks, um, you can see stress fractures in cer- certain places if it's o- over pulled or used in the wrong application for, you know, overloading with rigging or trying to pull a truck out of the mud. I mean, I've seen these things being been used for everything, right? So, um, 
overall visual inspection, run your hand over it, make sure you don't feel any, any, um, any phrase or like not phrase, but you know, uh, severed metal that would stick up that would pick your rope. Yeah. Um, and the next is obviously your, your, your largest thing that you're going to deal with is the gate, you know, making sure your gate functions properly. So you can go through, you know, I know the three, the three set methods, very popular here. You can twist, open the gate all the way through, make sure it closes You can come back halfway, make sure it closes. And then last not least open and close. So if you can make it through three operations and all the functions work, your care painter's good to go. You know, one of the things too, that you, you talk about in the courses is, you know, Take care of your gear. Don't throw your harness on the ground with everything mm -hmm. on there. Uh, and every single time you talk about this and you're going through gear inspection and how to properly take care of your gear, and um, right when we get done, someone takes off their harness and they throw it on the concrete. Yeah. You know, every uh, time, you know, and you can just hear it there. And because of what you taught, it just makes you cringe. You're like, oh, yeah, that ain't good. Yeah. That ain't good at all. No, it's it, it's a uh, it's almost a pet peeve of mine now. And you know what I I always say this. You know what's what's your gear worth? What's your life worth? You know I look at my gear and I look at my rope bridge. Something like that cost me twenty bucks, thirty bucks even. You know, am I gonna go to work all day and think about that? That's damaged or has a nick or that's glazed, and I'm gonna have that in the back of my head while I'm trying to perform. You know this gnarly removal. No, I don't want to think about that. My life's worth more than 30 bucks. When I look at this carabiner, it's worth $25. It's the same thing. I don't want to go to work with it sticky and just knowing in the back of my mind that it's not functioning properly and um, you lose focus, right? So what's your what's your life worth? Yeah, you know? is it worth 25 bucks? And it's not, you know? Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's frustrating to see people have to deal with that. And a lot of people do have to deal with it from their employers because they're not, they're not getting the gear that they need. Or they're just negligent, you know. They're out there banging up their gear, not mistreating it and misusing it. Um, and, and what do they do with that gear when it's damaged and they they shouldn't be using it in the field? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, they should be red tagging it and taking it out of service. Um, or you know what I see a lot sending it to the academy. Or sending it to the academy <laughs> so, so we so can we use can it. use it yeah. in training. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, the biggest thing is when people have damaged gear or something that's not working properly, I hear this all the time. Oh, yeah, I'll just use it as a, I'll use it for my slings or I'll use it for my rigging or I'll use it for an accessory carabiner. Well, you do that, you put it on the back of your harness, guarantee 99% of the time you're going to end up pulling that back out and you're going to use it at, at some point for uh, life support. Because you need it. Because you need it. And you're, and you're going to justify it to yourself. Like, I know it's damaged. I'll just, I'll just keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that because I've done that. I've done that for years. I've lived in that world. And, and, you know, maybe I'm just older and more scared and not scared, but maybe just a little wiser to some of that stuff and um, not worth it. How common is it for accidents or near misses to happen uh, due to a faulty carabiner? Or proper, not proper use of it. That's a good question. I don't know that answer. Yeah, maybe I, mean, some, I, I maybe hear it. Watch and I does, hear it yeah. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on these safety talks that come over from utility uh, utility companies and everything, side loading. Uh, you know, not properly, not closing correctly. You mm -hmm. know, was it the carabiner? Was it something that got jammed in there, or caught in there that you know sent them falling? You know, yeah. for that. So um, it'd be interesting to kind of learn that and see how many. You know, especially with all the gear, how many different accidents or near misses happen based on gear? And mm -hmm. what what are the things the manufacturers take in with that? Are they are they receiving that knowledge when things like that happen and trying to improve their products to make them better or safer? Uh, do you know anything on that? I think they do. You know, from what I talk to a lot, a lot of the, my friends anyway that work, you know, with these manufacturers, I, you know, I hear they're up on the, the latest. You know, when something happens with their gear, they know, you know, they're on top of it. So, um, you know, they're, these guys are doing their best. I know they are. You, you, no company's going to be perfect. They're going to have mistakes. They're going to have recalls. But that's how we push the envelope in the industry to keep get, making things better. You know, I, I hear this. And you guys will hear, hear me say this a lot. Um, I hear a lot of people knocking certain brands, knocking down certain um, products and, um, you know, it, it kind of drives me nuts because I'm like, if, if, 
if people didn't take that risk of building new products and on that edge of, man, this might work or might, this might suck, yeah. um, we'll never grow as an industry. Yeah. And I think everybody, every manufacturer has done so well to exceed that and just keep building and growing and designing that. And they're doing that, obviously. They're for profit. But at the same time, we they're listening to us because we need stuff built. We need certain style carabiners that are shaped a certain way for certain types of hands. Now we have a flood in the market of different types of carabiners, whatever shape, size, form, different gates, upside down gates, like just you name it, we have it, you know, and uh, they take that risk for us. So, you know, think about that before you start knocking a certain company for, you know, something you don't, you don't personally like. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Guys, that was our uh, first episode on gear talk here, uh, talking about different different types of carabiners, uh, s- safety based on them. To sorry, that was my watch going off. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, who's talking to me? I'm like, Kylie, be quiet. <laughs> um, you know, um, talking about safety, how to care for these carabiners that are out there, these life support, um, putting different products that are on there, and the purpose of some products that are supposed to be used with it and some that are not. So uh, it's awesome talk, guys. Uh, If you guys got something out of this today, if you learned something, share it on your page, put it on your Instagram, put it out there uh, so somebody else that didn't listen to this episode today can get something out of it. So um, that's our gear talk. We're going to be bringing to you guys on a weekly basis. Again, uh, Phil Rogacki and Jared Abergina here. Uh, Just remember, uh, let's save future lives by elevating the standard of the industry through safety, training, and innovation. See you guys. Bye. Peace.